Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter what time it is. I hope that you, my friends, are having another amazing day. My name is Carl Freund. I am the CEO of Kenneth James Realty. And today's kind of a day of reckoning for a lot of my real estate friends. Uh, they're freaking the fuck out, right? And so I'm gonna break this down for you. If you're a consumer, if you're a real estate agent, you're definitely gonna wanna listen up because I've been batting a thousand. Matter of fact, a little link to the video right here. I called this thing play by play three years ago. And so I've been waiting for this for a very, very long time. I think our days were numbered. And so I'm excited for the new changes. And I think this is a fantastic thing for the buyers, especially in this marketplace. I do think it's gonna create a fair and transparent market. So for the first time in a long time or ever actually in this country, here's a breakdown. What it is, is I went back through my uh, catalog and I went through and looked at the last two closed transactions in my company. And so I just picked my complete random and I wanna see exactly what you're looking at and break down the numbers for you. And so here's what we're kind of looking at, a rudimentary <laughs> sediment statement, please forgive me. Um, and so on the seller side here, we got the buyer side, debits and credits. Currently what happens is the seller is going to pay for the listing agent. That makes a lot of sense. Let's just call it 2%, whatever percent doesn't really matter. In this case, it was 2%. I'll be fully transparent with you. We did represent this buyer and we did get compensated 2.5% of that $560,000. Here's what I think is gonna happen. I think that the Justice Department is gonna come in and say, hey, wait a minute, what we wanna do is we wanna move that buyer agent compensation to the buyer debit side. Now this could be a percentage, it could be a flat fee, or it could be a combination of, or it could be an hourly fee. And so keep in mind, this really does open buyer's agents up to be competitive for the first time ever. So just like financial advisors, just like lawyers and other professions, accountants, it's going to be a competitive market and saying, hey, look, if you want my services, this is what it's going to cost you. It's either gonna be a percentage of the uh, sales price or it's gonna be an hourly rate or maybe it's even a flat fee. And so now you're gonna have agents really trying to add either a lot of value, which I think is great for the consumer, or they're gonna bring their prices down and actually be competitive, which I think is also good for the consumer. And so I think this is a fantastic thing. I think that genuinely for the first time, our interests are very well aligned with buyers and agents that suck, I'm sorry, there's a lot of them, are no longer gonna be able to suck. And so a lot of agents can't even negotiate like an extra pump on their latte. And now they're gonna have to really negotiate hard for some additional compensation or they're gonna have to add a lot of value to that transaction, whether that be finding off-market properties, knocking on doors, uh, or really being good at negotiation or offering a full concierge range of services that is going to add a proportionate amount of value to what you were being compensated. Because I do think that realtors for a long fucking time were overpaid. And so there's a lot of people that are gonna hate me for saying that, but it's true. And I own a real estate brokerage, a large one that employs a lot of people in five states. And I can tell you that there's many, comp maybe not in our firm, because we had a lot of value. A lot of times we come across agents that do not do their job. As simple as that. They just suck. They suck at life and I can't wait to see them gone. It's just as simple as that. Truth is hard, truth sucks, but it's gonna create a great competitive environment. And I think this is a fantastic thing. So. If this is the case, let's just break down this scenario if this was the case. Let's say that this seller, and let's just back it up for two seconds. Let's say if I'm going into a listing comp or a, a consultation and I'm saying, hey, look, my fee is 2% or 3%. Uh, doesn't really matter, it's all competitive. Those are negotiable. And you know, I wanna compensate uh, a buyer's agent. We can't do that anymore. But what you can do is offer seller concessions and say, hey, look, I'm, you know, the seller is willing to pay up to two and a half or 3% of the purchase price towards your buyer's closing costs. Well, that's all encompassing, right? And that would include your fee now, right? Because it's now in the buyer debit column. Do you see where this is gonna be a problem? So let's break down this scenario particularly. This is say this seller opted, opted to give the buyer 2.5% of the purchase price towards the buyer's closing costs, but it's gotta be all encompassing. Well, if we add all these fees up and we put back you know, some of the, letter, the other credits here, which is taxes and then partial year worth of taxes and 25 bucks random, for a lender credit, this cost to the buyer out of pocket was $8,989.82, kind of a random number, uh, but which equates to about 1.6% of the total purchase price. Hmm, let's do some math. Let's say that you are getting 2.5 in buyer's uh, paid closing costs, or seller paid closing costs for the buyer, and the costs were 1.6%, you're roughly gonna net out about 0.9%. Okay, and a lot of agents are gonna freak out and they're gonna say, hey, I'm not working for less than 2%. I'm not working for less than 3%. Cool, somebody else will. Simple as that. Or you've gotta demonstrate a lot of value because every dollar above that, 2.5% is gonna to have to come out of the buyer's pocket, dollar for dollar. And so the question becomes is, how good are you, really? 
And here's where I think this is a kind of a bad system, and I called this again in that video, and I'll put a link to it. Uh, this could potentially disproportionately uh, impact lower income buyers. And so I happened to pull an FHA deal, which was actually the first deal I pulled. And here's the situation. Purchase price in this scenario was $344,990. The closing costs net to the buyer were $11,031.33, which represents about 3.19575%, about 3.2% of the purchase price in closing costs. And that's actually before the mortgage insurance premium on FHA loans that uh, is called MIP. Mortgage insurance premium is added to the loan amount. So it is a closing cost, it's just not direct to the buyer. It's wrapped up in the loan amount. And so I'm waiting, I'm like, here, wait a minute. Let's, let's just say that we're, you know, I'm the seller in that scenario and I only offer 2.5% in buyer paid closing costs. Well, your agent's gonna have to negotiate higher than that if you don't wanna pay out of pocket, dollar for dollar. And then where does the agent's compensation come in? And this creates a scenario where it could actually really uh, be a detriment to, to low income buyers where they're going directly to the listing agent you know, in, in doing a dual agency situation, which is not allowed in all states. He, it is here in Arizona, I'm in Arizona at the moment. Um, but that could be a problem because the listing agent always doesn't have the buyer's interest best in mind. Um, and so just keep that in mind too, like this could really have a major impact. So I'm looking to lenders and saying, hey, FHA, hey, VA, you know, might be a good uh, opportunity for you guys to step up and say, hey, look, we're willing to compensate a buyer's agent an additional 1%, 2% flat fee up to a maximum, maybe, I don't know what you, they can get creative with it and put it into the loan amount so it's not directly out of pocket. But then the thing is, is that that buyer now pays that agent's commission, essentially, uh, we'll call it a success fee for the next 30 years, potentially, right? And so that sucks. Um, is this a perfect scenario? No, but I do think that there's an opportunity here for a massive amount of savings. And so... Um, that's what it is. It is what it is. So love to hear your thoughts on it. Please take two minutes to like and subscribe. Leave a comment, uh, even if you love or hate me, but I certainly love you guys. So thank you for tuning in. I genuinely appreciate you and hope to see you guys very soon. Thanks. Take care. See ya.